Hello and welcome to this series of videos on article marketing. In this video, we'll be addressing the author's resource box, or bio box, and some people even call it a SIG or a signature. Now, do not confuse article writing with article marketing. Article writing is, for example, where you write articles for a magazine or a newspaper because that's your job and the magazine or newspaper pays you every week to do this. Or you might be what they call a freelancer and you write articles hoping to get it published by a newspaper or magazine and, of course, hoping to get paid for it. Now, article marketing, on the other hand, is where you write an article in the hope that the readers of your article will follow the path you've laid out for them and end up at your website. Once at your website, you direct them to sign up for your e-zine or newsletter and or purchase whatever product you might be promoting at the time. The path that I'm referring to is called the author's resource or bio box. The whole purpose of writing an article is to get the reader to the bottom of your article so they will see your bio box and click on whatever link to your website or your offer that you've provided. Now let's take a look at some important items that should be in your resource or bio box as well as a couple of items that are optional. You know, so if you want to, you can add them as well. Now here are a few items that you definitely want to have in there. One and most importantly is your name. And some people just do not put their name in the, in the resource box and I just cannot for the life of me understand why. Now another, of course, what I consider an important and obvious item but some people tend to leave it out is your web address. And another item that's pretty important, and again, one of the reasons behind marketing with articles, that's the name of the video, is a two to three line offer. And you don't want to go overboard on this. You don't want to make it, you know, 23 or 24 lines. Uh, just keep it simple and provide something that's uh, unique and that is relative to the article's content. And then, of course, you want to provide a call to action. Let me show you a quick example of what I'm talking about. Now, here's an article, and this is from one of my favorite sites on article marketing, Ezine Articles. And right here is Cindy's bio box. Now, one point I want to uh, kind of bring to your attention now, and I'll be touching on it again later on in this video, is how it flows. Right here is the resource box. Of course, it isn't a visual box and you don't want it to be. You want it to flow from the article on into the resource information or the uh, you know bio box. As you can see there's nothing relating here to the end of the article. In other words it doesn't say uh, thanks for reading my article or good luck or uh, the end uh, anything to that effect. I mean just from a, a reader standpoint it looks like this is just part of the article. And as you can see, here is an anchor text for a free report. That's the two to three line offer I was referring to. And if you look down here in the status bar, you'll see that that is the URL to, I am assuming, Cindy's website. And as you can see down here, it tells a little bit about her. Uh, she's, you know, as a result of this information she's about to provide to you for free, uh, she's tripled her income. And here is the URL, again looking down here at the sat status bar, here's the URL that this free report goes to. So if for some reason or another, when some other website owner republishes this article on their site and does not copy the HTML code correctly, or if at all, they're still going to have, the, the readers from that website will still have the URL that this report is referring to. So even if this turns out to be a dead link as a result of a website owner not republishing this correctly, no big deal. Right here, you got the actual absolute URL right here. So that's another good point I wanted to make. Use anchor text. That's cool. Don't go overboard on them, but it's also a good idea that you have the same referring URL also in your uh, resource box, just in case. A couple of quick points I want to toss at you is remember your bio or your resource box is not your resume. Do not load it up with every accomplishment you've had since kindergarten. It's also not a place to list every website you own. Use this as an example. I mean, who knows? Cindy might have 30 or 40 you know, URLs or, or domains. They're not all on here. She's referring to one. And that's what you need to keep in mind. And of course, the one that you've got in your resource box, make it relative to the content. Uh, if, you, if your article is on dog training and your URL is on you know, car maintenance, guess what? Spend a few bucks a year 
and get you a different URL that's related to dog training or write your articles on car maintenance for crying out loud. Now, a couple of things I suggest not to have in your resource box is your phone number. I mean, if you feel the need to advertise your phone number, do so on your web page. And once the reader gets to your web page via your uh, clickable link here, then they've got access to your phone number. Don't put it on the resource box. Another thing, and the jury is kind of still out on this, but in my humble opinion, do not put your email address in here. I mean, can you say spam me, please? Again, like your phone number, if you feel the urge to put your email address somewhere, well, put it in your uh, on your web page, you know, somewhere at the bottom in your footer or at some point on your web page. Don't take up the valuable space of your resource box to uh, advertise your email address. Uh, do not use your resource box as a means to try and convince the reader that you're an expert. In other words, don't clutter it up with all that stuff because, frankly, if you haven't done so in the body of the article, chances are pretty good that the reader isn't even at your resource box. They're on another web page somewhere else. And another thing I've kind of pointed out earlier in this video was you want to make your resource box flow from your article. And a good way to do this is by starting your first sentence of your resource box the same way as you started the last paragraph of your article. In other words, if you put the word so as your first word here, put the word so as your first word here. Play around with it. Again, it just gets the reader to flow from the article on into the resource box without them feeling that, okay, the article has ended, I'm done with what I've gathering my information, and I'm out of here. Uh, so, again, make it flow right into the resource box. And also, uh, to add to the branding effect of your bio or your resource box, if the directory allows it, post an image of yourself as well. You know, along with your name, obviously. Uh, and be sure and use, if you're going to do this, use the same image that you use elsewhere in other websites and blogs of yours, and so also in other articles you might be posting. Again, this just helps the reader know, like, and trust you. Now, make this work for you in your own way. Use this as an example or a template for your own methods. Uh, make sure that the links that you enter are working. Uh, even though that the links working last month, you want to make sure that they're working prior to you submitting them to the directories. Because these articles you're posting are pretty much forever. You know, you want to kind of set it and forget it. You don't want to have an article up there with dead links. It's just not going to be beneficial to you at all. And another thing is do not overdo the anchor text because some website owners that are republishing your article on their site may not copy the HTML code of your anchor text properly, if at all. And then it ends up just being a dead link on their site. So consider this and you may opt to just have one anchor text followed by the absolute URL, you know, as Cindy's done here. And remember that you may be limited to only three or four clickable links. So for that matter, you may not have any anchor text at all if this takes up the place of a more valuable absolute URL that you could use in its place. Now this gives you a good basic background to work from in creating your own author's resource or bio box. And another point is create several styles of your bio box using the aforementioned as a foundation. Test them in different articles on different directories. And based on your testing results, use what works and adjust what does not. Now this brings us to the end of this video on creating your author's resource box. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day.